Today's video, you're gonna see me make this bad boy. I gotta say, I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> um, the materials are definitely a bit different than a normal video, but we're definitely starting on the same base. And surprisingly enough, you can create this entire mask with that base. Now, as you can see, it is the same one as all these bad boys, um, just a different set of materials and there's a couple of little extra things that you can get to make this definitely easier like the wig and um, I used kind of a bald cap in parts of this now the bald cap steps are not necessary um, the reason why I chose to construct it with that bald cap is I wasn't sure how I was going to do the hair, and then after I had started constructing the mask, I bought the wig. Um, this wig was about $13 to $14 on Amazon, and I will link it below just so you know which one I used. I think the length and the cut and everything like that is perfect for it, so um, if you do plan on making this mask, I would get this exact wig. It's perfect. I mean... I would never wear this god-awful thing myself, but it works really good for a mask because how thick this little band is here at the top and I was able to secure it to the top of the mask using um, super glue. The ears um, that you see here are not the same ones as I was sculpting. I actually had those ones sit for 24 hours and I was like, man, they're ugly. They're not the right shape, they're not the right uh, size and everything, so I reconstructed these on the fly while I was working. <laughs> um, and they're basically the same steps as you see with the other ears. I just sculpted them, let them sit for 24 hours, and then I did the same thing I did with the front of the mask, which is liquid latex and then paint. That's it. Honestly, um, I know I missed filming these, but I was, like I said, doing multitasking, so, you know. I have to say that I emotionally broke down, like, two times while creating this mask, only because I have never been more proud of something I've made before. Um, I honestly thought that... I couldn't do this and I did it so there is a little bit of a clip in there <laughs> of me crying but um, I wanted to keep it in there because it's a good memory for me and how I felt while I was making the mask so that's popped in there um, and I created this mask specifically for a streamer that I watch on Twitch who plays Dead by Daylight. She is a fog whisperer and a pig mane. Her name is Toki. I will have her link to her Twitch down below. I believe her streaming schedule is Sunday through Thursday, I want to say. Um... But yeah, she is such an amazing streamer and a fun atmosphere. And her and another streamer that I follow, Spooky Loops, I'm making him a Huntress mask because he's a Huntress main. And I was like, man, that would be fucking sick. I was going to make him the bunny one, but let's keep this a secret. I'm probably going to make him the one wicked horned huntress mask but I haven't decided yet so you'll have to tell me in the comments below if you want me to try to make that because <laughs> I will um the doctor is put on hold for a little bit I am just not inspired right now with the doctor's mask um I did go through dead by daylight and look at all the skins for the other characters and they just released a new uh, mid-chapter release with a clown mask that I'm obsessed with so I'm gonna actually try to create that one um, because I'm so excited it's so 
fucking stunning. I just, I have to give it a damn try, you know? But anyway, enough blabbering. If you want to see how I created this mask, then keep on watching. This part is totally optional and it doesn't really help you in any way except for keep your uh, mask attached to the base of this like head thing, which I did find to be really helpful. Um, so you can skip this part. It didn't end up needing to be necessary. Um, I kept it in just in case anyone wanted to see how I did attach the bald cap to the mask itself. Masking tape. Um, it sticks to latex really well, and it ended up working out to hold it onto the base, as you can see. Um, now, starting things off with this, I had to draw out the eye shape. As you can see on the mask here, her eye shape is kind of coming back, and it's more a-lined or female or feline rather so i had to create a new shape for the eyes and the masking tape is there to help me enforce that new shape once i do cut out the excess area of the base mask itself so use that to create your little guidelines cut out the excess and then um go from there you also want to flip the mask around and put tape on the underside so it's not sticky. And then um, I cut out a giant triangle underneath the nose part of the mask because the construction of this, you can breathe through the actual pig snout. Um, if you did not create that ventilation hole, this mask would be really hot to wear um, and you wouldn't be able to breathe breathe very well because the only outlet that you would have is through the eyes. So keeping that slit open underneath the nose is going to be really helpful. <laughs> Moving on to the base sculpt. Now it's very important that you use that Mod Podge to your advantage. You're putting down a layer of the Mod Podge, you're pressing down a layer of the Model Magic. Every time you get a layer down, you add another coat of that Model Magic on top of it. And we're really using this area to become more wide. So I'm really flattening out this area so that she doesn't have a pinched in nose like we do and like the, the max mask came with. So um, we're making it come out so that it doesn't slope as much. Um, as you can see, this one I didn't do it as much. So on this mask, it pinches in quite a bit, and we're taking away that part by jetting it out and making it even with the forehead. So don't forget that part or else it'll look really weird. We're also trying to hide the nose area into the snout. There is a little bump on the side of the pig mask um, where you can kind of see it slope down. But, you know, it's it's latex, so it's heavy, and the model magic underneath it is still very malleable. So it just sloped down a little bit. I don't hate it. I think it looks really cool. Um, you don't really notice it with everything else that's happening. I also had to pronounce the cheek area and make it almost level with the snout area of the nose. So that's what you see me doing here, is really building up this area so that it's more pronounced and more forward than more offset and back. We don't want really high cheekbones per se that are this way, we want them more this way. The base part of the snout, you really need to build up and get that area strong. Um, as you can see here, I'm avoiding covering the part where I uh, cut the nose hole because I really want you to be able to breathe through it. Um, and then we're taking and we're creating this type of shape all the way around. Now, you could have just finished the other side of the mask before even starting the snout. It doesn't matter. I was hopping all over the place when I was creating this, so uh, the one thing that I do recommend is once you get the where you can see the blue is done before adding, which you'll see in a minute, the yellow, 
I would say let it sit overnight and that's what I did and that's why I'm adding a whole new layer of the Mod Podge so that when I add the yellow it sticks to itself and I can start sculpting. Um, there was no method to the madness with the colors that were chosen here for the model magic. Honestly, I just opened a pack of yellow, opened a pack of blue. Um, this sculpt altogether, you're probably going to need two packages or one and a half packs is what I think I init what I essentially used because creating the ears and things like that. So you'll need quite a bit more model magic than you would on any of the other masks. I think Oni was the only other mask that used up an entire pack of model magic. I get the big ass tubes that come with like five packs inside of it and if you're creating more than one mask I recommend it. Now I'm anchoring a piece of the yellow underneath so that when I wrap the um, tubes along the snout that I had created it's acting as an anchor and as a sticky part for the model magic. And then I'm just creating little snakes and I'm going in circles and circles and circles. And the great thing about that is that a pig's snout has these little ridges on it so that when you do go over it with the liquid latex, it doesn't need to be smoothed out because it's giving you those folds when you stipple on that liquid latex, which I thought was Chef's fucking kiss. <laughs> Chef's kiss! <laughs> but yeah, I mean, a lot of this is visual, honestly. It's very easy, the snout part. Um, the one thing that I did not put into this area is that I had put two pieces of the wrapper of the Model Magic. I taped them up into circles and I shoved them into the nostrils of the pig mask to sit overnight so that they would not lose their shape and they would stay like this and the model magic would set. I highly recommend doing that before going on to the next stages of adding the liquid latex as you can see here. Pop those bad boys out and it's keeping its shape nicely. I did also wait to do the bottom jawline um, and essentially all I'm doing is adding a chin strap and then jetting out the bottom of the mouth and attaching it. You don't need to go with any model magic at the chin area because this gives us a little bit of a deviation from where the model magic was blended down to to give it more of a fat chin like a pig would have. Um, and since this doesn't cover your neck, it's good to have that little subtle difference. And this is just smoothing it out and as you can see I did not even attempt to make it smooth as possible. The texture of the latex that goes on top of it is going to be perfect for those little divots and devi deviations there. And I always have a picture of the pig up every time I'm sculpting. Now these were the initial ears that I created. As you can see, the base is actually very wide. Um, that's why I didn't end up liking them. I was like, ugh, these are wide. They're not little diamonds like pig ears are. So when I re-sculpted them, the base is much thinner in width and the ears kind of come out more as a diamond than they do a triangle. So when you are sculpting the ears, I let these bad boys again sit overnight before sealing and then adding the liquid latex. After everything is done and you're happy though, I would highly recommend doing a couple layers of Mod Podge Glossy. It will keep the texture and it will give you this nice shine. For the liquid latex part of it, this is the most time consuming but easy step of everything. You let Model Magic do all of the work for you. All you're doing is covering all of that for a uniform base. So the first four layers that I did of liquid latex are done with this paintbrush and I'm just brushing on layers and in between hitting it with the um, hair dryer on hot so that the layers underneath dry and they are not still tacky. The last 
five to six layers, we're all done with stipple and a sponge. Now for the paint job, I went ahead and used an alcohol activated paint set for special effects makeup. There is no need for this, you can use acrylics. I wanted to try using this because of its translucency. I really liked the pigments for it, so I went ahead and base painted in a rose adjuster for the, um, the undertones in the pig mask, and then I used several variations of red to deepen the crevices, and then a beige tone to go on top of the pink. In this lighting, it looks really red, but when you're seeing it in person, it's actually quite beige toned with red undertones. So take your time, build up that color slowly, and um, stay close to those pinks and beige tones for it. Um, as you can see, I'm watching Twitch in the background. <laughs> I think that was Toki's stream, too. <laughs> And I remember just like messaging her and being like, I fucking finished this! <laughs> but yeah, paint, paint away. Come paint away! Come paint away with me! Oh, and I did use black as well. <laughs> I, uh, I don't think I've ever been this proud of something I've made before. <laughs> Um, she's not done, obviously, but... <laughs> it just, um... feels good. It feels good. I am... Um... I'm just... I, I'm so proud of this. And uh, I can't wait to see it when it's done. So, um... This is not even done. I haven't done the ears. I haven't painted any of the detail work on it yet. I just am looking at it. I'm taking like a step back after getting the base paint done and um, I don't know. I've, I don't think I've ever been this proud of something that I've made before. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> And I'm going to be even more excited when I get to send this off to the owner, um, which I'll probably touch on in the intro or the outro. Um, but <laughs> I fucking did that. I did it. I did it, yo. The rest of this is just applying the ears. I took and pinned up the hair, I sectioned out the top part of the scalp, and then I went ahead and simply glued the ears on top of the hair. As you can see here, it's on its own weft. Um, so they are movable, so when you run around and stuff, the ears do kind of flop. Um, but then the hair is covering up everything 
you know? And that's the that on that. Super glue and a lot of hope. I glued the wig onto the edge of the mask, up here, and on the sides. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching, spooky friends. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys all enjoyed this mask and how to create it. If you have any questions, comments, or anything, pop them down below. I would super appreciate it. And let me know if you'd be interested in the clown's new mask. I'm just, it's so different and beautiful and gold. So I'm really, in, I really wanna create it. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. What should come next? Should the crazy huntress mask come next or should the clown? I'm leaning towards clown. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as usual, stay spooky, friends.